Hey guys, Kamina the coach here. Ugh, feeling a little subdued because I had a little bit of a traumatic experience. It's not a little bit. Traumatic experience on Saturday, a couple of them, and then another traumatic experience today. So while I am still Kamina the coach, I just want to talk to you a little bit um, because most of my subscribers are not adoptees. This channel has not been geared towards adoptees. It's been geared towards people interested in um, mental, emotional, and spiritual health and towards those who are getting ready to go overseas to work. So, um, and I, I know that a lot of you care very deeply about me. So I want to talk to those people who don't know anything about adoption or if you're on the other side of adoption, if you're an adoptive parent or you know somebody who's an adoptive parent, I need to calm down because um, it's all very emotional. And um, while you will find adoptees that are very, very pro-adoption, um, some of the things that I'm going to tell you are just, especially older adoptees and older adoptees that had really good families. So I'm happy for them and I respect everybody's opinion. But I'm going to speak um, from the pers my perspective and from my research. Most people who know me know that I give very little opinion that is not based on research. So once I started my um, search for my um, first family, mid-January 2021, I started aggressively researching adoption, adoption trauma, anything I could find about, about um, the adoptee experience. And my experience is, is um, while we all go through a lot of, this, lot of the same things, I am unique in that I am a transracial adoptee. I was adopted by a family that is not the same race as me. They were white. I'm also biracial, which adds another layer of complexity to it. And I am an LDA. I'm a late discovery adoptee. I didn't find out for sure that I was adopted until I was 32. So a lot of layers of complexity, plus the fact that I was adopted into a really abusive family. So... Um, so I had done a, a video earlier, um, because going through all this has been very emotionally exhausting. And especially because I don't have anybody physically near me to lean on, it's been very taxing on my emotions. So I did a video to express that and someone reached out to me and I'm not sure exactly what she said, but she sent me a link to, um, uh, um, what is it? The movie about the guy who was in the Navy, who was in a foster home. What is it? I, it'll come to me. Anyways, um, I didn't even read the message because when I saw the link to the movie, I was like, stop. Let's just not. And it, it's based on a true story, but it has, we have very little in common and most of the stories and shows and movies about adoptees are not from the adoptee perspective. And I was very raw from, you know, from just from everything going on. And I just, I responded too quickly. I responded, oh, this is offensive. The Antoine Fisher story. I knew I'd remember. I was like, this is offensive to me and it would probably be offensive to any other adoptee if you sent them to this this to them out of the blue. I tried to recall the message, but she saw it before I could recall it. Um, and um, because I wanted to respond when I was calmer, she ended up getting the message anyways, and then um, proceeded to ask if I wanted to talk. And I didn't because I needed some time to like calm down and just recenter myself. And she proceeded to kind of try to push herself on me. And um, which I found kind of offensive. So, um, so here's the number one thing I would, uh, my, my first, um, that I would like to tell you, um, if you don't, if you haven't done, I, I don't care if you know an adoptee, apparently her mother is an adoptee. Um, if you haven't done extensive, no, it doesn't matter what kind of extensive research you've done. Don't offer advice, not just to an adoptee. Don't offer advice to anyone that is unsolicited. Ask someone first. 
This is to anyone. Don't offer unsolicited advice, especially to a stranger. I appreciate that you guys feel very connected to me and I love that. But don't offer unsolicited advice, especially about something very, very sensitive. Now, somebody offered me unsolicited advice about cockroaches. Okay, that's cool. But please don't offer unsolicited advice about sensitive topics. You can say, hey, would you care to talk? Or, you know, I have a tool that might be useful to you. And offer, you know, request... And, and and kind of question, would you like this information? But don't push your, your opinions or your ideas off on people about sensitive topics. It's just not a good idea. It's not going to go well. You don't know what kind of headspace you that person is in. And unless you know them very, very well, you might very well push them into a place of crisis. Um, so I know for me personally, I was about to have my first therapy session that Saturday and it just really put me in a bad space immediately as I'm already very nervous about this therapy session. So then the next trauma was the therapy session with a white therapist, an old white man therapist. So I've already said I'm transracially adopted into a very traumatic racist white family. So this was already not the greatest dynamic. So I wasn't meeting with him for a therapy session. I was meeting with him because on his website, he said that he would help people who wanted to go into reunion for free. Um, so he asked me what I wanted and I told him immediately, I just wanted help with the reunion because I didn't want to push, you know, them away. It's very important it's very important that I be able to, to me, to be able to establish any kind of relationship, even if it's very superficial with my African-American family. And I recognize that I need, to, I need to approach that delicately, and I would like professional help with that. So instead of respecting that, he immediately starts going into a therapy type session um, you know, and I said, I, you know, I recognize that my father may have a wife and she may be threatened by this, you know, fairly attractive 42 year old woman. He's like, yeah, really attractive. I'm like, how is that appropriate? Um, in a therapy session, then he proceeded to tell me his girlfriend was black. Then at the end of the session, he's like, oh, you had mentioned Beyonce, you know, I just wanted to tell you, you know, about this video skit on Saturday night. You should look up Beyonce, find, find out she's black. Then at the end of this, what was supposed to be help in my reunion search for free, he then tells, then he asked me how much I can afford to pay. So it was just all really bad. That was really bad. And that was at the tail end of this woman, you know, trying well-intentioned, but also causing damage. Then this man who is also well-intentioned causing damage. And he's a professional, so he should have known better. Then, so what is today? Tuesday. So... I was really excited to find another transracial, biracial adoptee who shares a very similar story to me. Her parents just kept telling her she was white. So I was really like, I'm not excited that she had to go through that, but I excited to know that I'm not an alien, that I'm not the only one who has gone through this. So I was really excited to find her story on Adoptees On. Um, uh, her, she goes by Do. Do D-O-U-X. I think her first name is Nell. Amazing, strong, very young though, 20 something. So I reached out to her. I was really excited to find her. And I shared that with a coworker who is also an old white person, um, an older white woman. And I don't know why I did that. I was just excited and I wanted to share my pleasure with her and it just went off the rails. And she ends up telling me this whole long story about these, this couple that had tried and tried and had miscarriage after miscarriage. And now they've adopted a little black boy and here he is, here's a video of him. And, and the family tried to fight to get him back and it was just for money. And, and I just don't understand why people are, has nothing to do with what I was talking to her about. I was talking about me and 
And she's like, oh, well, your story is just the way it is because of the trauma that you went through. I'm like, taking a child away from their mother at birth is trauma, no matter how you look at it. And I, I no matter how I tried to explain it to her, she, she didn't get it. The child is very dark-skinned black boy. There's no getting around that he's black and and he's with this very southern white family. I'm like, well, is he being exposed to black community when he's older? Eventually, I just had to get up and walk out of her office. I don't know if we're going to be able to talk again. Um, I've gotten to the point where I don't feel like I can talk to anybody except another adoptee of color about anything because I, I'm starting to feel like everybody has their own opinion and they're not involved and they just want to impress their opinion that's based on no, no research. It's just their opinion and they want to press that up on me and they feel like um, my opinions that are based on extensive research aren't valid and that um, my experience as a black woman in this situation is just not valid. Oh, it's, it's just one situation. When in truth, there are quite a few of us. Now, it is very, fairly unusual to have a family like try to convince you that you're white. That is rather, relatively unusual. But the trauma that I went through, um, not all adoptees, thank God, go through that. Anyways. So I guess the, the moral of this story is, um, so when people say things, especially people that you care about, that you don't understand, um, I would say either one, don't comment on it or lean in and try to understand. I would not offer unsolicited advice, please, especially to very sensitive situations. And I understand that people don't understand that this is a very sensitive topic. The Primal Wound, if you want to read the book, The Girls That Went Away, um, is a very good book that will help you um, come to some understanding of what we're going through. But there is a, a wound that is in us that is pre-verbal before we had wounds that will, before we had words that we carry with us our entire lives. Um, adoptees are 15 times more likely to commit suicide. We're 15 times more likely to be serial killers. We're 15 times more likely to kill our parents. We only represent two to 3% of the population. So yes, there is something wrong with it. Even if we are raised in very good families, her ty her whole tyrant of the, the woman that I spoke with at work. I didn't even really understand it. Like all she had to do was lean in and support me, but then she wanted to come with this other story. Um, also, if you're white and watching this, I would encourage you to read White Fragility. Um, if you're offended by this and you feel the need to defend, I would encourage you to read White Fragility. I'm exhausted with having to defend um, myself. I can show you research to support it, but I just shouldn't even have to. It's exhausting. <laughs> And have you ever heard the saying, the road to hell is paved with good intentions? I understand that you may not mean to cause someone pain, but very often words hurt very deeply. So, um, I'll end with saying that I got my DNA back um, a couple of weeks ago, and that was definitely the best day of my life. I very, in, I very surely am half Italian. I am my other half about half is African, Northern African, Egypt, and um, Nigeria, which is really amazing to finally know. And I'm much, I'm, I'm saying it much calmer than I actually feel because it was really amazing to find that out. And I would just like to end with saying to you, who is probably not adopted, um, can you understand? Probably not why that was the best day of my life, because it's the first time I've ever seen anything about myself that's true. I've never even seen my real birth certificate. Who am I? I, I my DNA is the first time I've had any inkling of who I am outside of the spiritual being that is moving in the universe. 
So I really needed to get that off my chest. So thank you guys. <laughs> This was really not to attack anybody and if you feel attacked, I really encourage you to really look inside of yourself because this wasn't to attack anybody. This is all just about um, really myself and my community for other people that feel the way that I do and if you love somebody that, that has gone through the things that I've gone through, I would really encourage you to lean in and not attack and um, don't offer advice. Um, unsolicited advice. It could really ha cause more damage than you think. All right. And research those therapists a little bit better. <laughs> Until next time, this is Kamina the Coach wishing you love, light, peace, and joy. And I'll see you next time. Peace.